Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Electrical Outlet. Uh, if you're new here, which you probably are if you're watching this video, since this is a tutorial, uh, then you might know of the struggles of getting Windows NT 3.1, or any of the Windows NT 3.x operating systems, to run on VMware Workstation. This is Windows NT 3.1, and by the end of this tutorial, Oops, I have a disk in here. By the end of this tutorial, you will have a working... <sighs> not stupid. You will have a working copy of Windows NT 3.1 that functions. You can log in and use all the programs all you want. And you will be able to have this in your virtual machine library by the end of this video. So, now let's install another copy to show you how you can do that. So, we are just going to create a new virtual machine. And we're going to go with custom advanced because of certain features we need to set up. And so right here is the screen you, pro you probably skip over all the time. It says virtual machine hardware compatibility, blah, blah, blah. Well, you're going to want to set this back to 12.x. I don't know if this is required, but it's what I did for myself, and it's what worked. And so it probably works if you set it to a higher compatibility. But for best results, I'm going to say set it to this just because it works. And... Uh, I am unsure if it works on newer versions. So then click on and then just make sure it's selected uh, to I will install the operating system later. And then right here, select a guest operating system. You might say, oh, well, select Windows NT. No, you want to go down and select Windows 3.1. Why do you want to do this? Well, the main issue with running Windows NT 3, which is unsupported by VMware, on VMware is that it does not support the right processor and if you select Windows NT which was built for Windows NT 4 it's not gonna run because it's gonna be running on a Pentium processor emulated and uh, you want a uh, Windows 3.1 mode I believe emulates a 486 or a 386 or one of those and then just leave that alone 16 megabytes of RAM is fine I'm gonna set it to 64 because it's what I have on my previous virtual machine now actually I have 256 but 64 is plenty and then just leave that on default and then make sure you select IDE for the drive and then it does need to be very big even one gigabyte is enough and since this is a demo virtual machine that I'm just gonna delete after installing I'm just gonna uh, keep it on that and then you want to click on edit virtual machine once you've got it up delete the CD drive because you don't need that and then add a floppy drive then you want to navigate to uh, your Windows 3.1 install floppies which you can download really easily from uh, winworldpc.com then power on the virtual machine and then you might get this message that the IDE device configuration is in incorrect and you need to move it uh, from IDE 1 colon 1 to IDE 1 colon 0. So if that pulls up for you, click on edit, click on the hard drive, click on advanced, and move it to 1 comma 0. This is because we removed the CD-ROM drive. And that's just a problem that happens. And then just set it up. Click on express setup set it up as you would and then once you're on the hard drive screen format is NTFS that's what worked for me I'm sure fat might work fine but again this is the best results then just format it and let it go and then do the long an arduous process of swapping out all the disks until it's done. So I'm going to go do that and then check back once I'm done. Alright, so we are now on the final disk here, which is disk 9. So I'm just going to put in disk 9 and then 
uh, remove the floppy from the drive, and then either use Control Alt Insert to um, reboot it, or just take Control R to reset the virtual machine, and then you should see the OS loader thing. And then if all is well, all is not well, we have uh, this wonderful uh, crash screen here, claiming inaccessible boot device. Huh, that's strange. I didn't get that before. I'm going to mess around in the IDE drive configurations because that's a pretty straight message there. Boot device is inaccessible. Let's change it to 0, comma 0, or 0, colon 0, and see if this works. That's just because I have the floppy inserted. Control R. Are we working now? Yep, okay. So make sure your uh, IDE configuration is set to zero colon zero. I am sorry about that. Uh, make sure that's set there. So now, congratulations. If you made it this far, then you're in the clear. You've gotten past all the processor incompatibilities. You're on Windows NT setup. There's no guarantee that it works for you. I've seen a different tutorial that uses an entirely different method, and uh, that might work for you. But for me at least, and this is a modern processor, this works. So then just type in whatever name you want to, uh, type in a computer name, type in English American, cancel the printer setup, uh, cancel the uh, network card thing, and then once again, do all the install disk stuff, which I'm going to cut out. Okay, so you should, see, you should see something like this after you're done with all the setup disks. Uh, it should appear a bunch of programs on your screen, and then it should say system is migrating information from any previously installed DOS system. Then you can enter password if you want. I'm just going to leave it blank. And then you can enter your username and another password if you want. I'm going to leave it blank. Then you set you know, your time zone. Again, at this point, it's just normal setup. <coughs> then you can go ahead and close out the uh, insert disk. And then it'll format it anyway. So if you had a, I just had set up disk 22 in the drive. So now that is formatted as a emergency repair disk. So I'm gonna have to replace that. So then just restart your computer. A WIS loader version 3.1. If all is well, now it should convert the file system to NTFS. Because either way, no matter what you select, it installs it on uh, FAT. And then this time. There you are. Installed and booted. This is something I've been trying to achieve for uh, over a year. It is something that I finally achieved tonight. And uh, now I'm going to go see if it works on NT3.51. Looks like this is going to be my definitive virtual machine since the mouse driver seems to get messed up on the previous one, but here it works fine. So this is going to be my Windows NT3 virtual machine. So that's how you install it. Uh, if you like this video, I found it helpful. If you've finally gotten uh, Windows NT3 installed because of this video, then leave a like. It would be much appreciated. And sub. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want more tutorials and other stuff. I don't know how to play Minesweeper, so I'm just clicking randomly. It's something to do with the numbers around it, but it's honestly too complex for me to bother with. So, that's it. That's all I have to say. Goodbye, and have a great day. Wash your freaking hands as well. This is the Electrical Outlet, signing out. Ending my recording.